Hello and welcome to the latest uh, webinar by BIC Instruments. My name is John Kowalski. I'm part of the marketing team here at BIC and I'd like to welcome you. Um, today we have a great presentation. Um, it's an introduction to the PELT technology. Um, our speaker today is uh, Ms. Renee Bassett. She's one of the technical uh, sales representatives at PELT. Um, if you have any questions during today's presentation, please log them in the chat box located in the bottom right hand corner of your screen and uh, time permitting we'll get to them. If we do run out of time, um, we'll download those and, and get back with you uh, directly um, to make sure your questions are answered. We are also recording this, um, so immediately following the presentation, you'll receive an automated uh, message um, that will contain the link. Feel free to uh, watch this at a later date, share it with colleagues, uh, whatever you like. Um, so with that, uh, let me welcome uh, Renee. Renee, glad to have you here today. All right. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, hello, everyone. I am Renee Bassett. I have been with um, working with Pelt now for about 24 years. So I have been uh, familiar with a lot of current Pelt users and I'm looking forward to working with uh, future Pelt users. Today I'm gonna give an introductory presentation about Pelt. I'm gonna be going through a presentation. And as John said, if you have questions, please put them in the chat and we will get to them after the presentation. So to start off, to give a little brief history of um, PELT, uh, PELT was founded in 1986 by JSR Ultrasonics. That was the name of the company, and it's located in Pittsburgh, New York, which is outside of Rochester, New York, which is um, upper uh, north, north, west of New York. So we're between Buffalo and Syracuse. Um, so sort of close to like Niagara Falls area, about an hour to the east of Niagara Falls. And then in 1990, 91, the first Pelt gauge was introduced into the automotive industry. And it was in a cabinet and it um, had a very long, like an 18 meter cable. And it was a little bit rustic, but you were able to get thickness data from that. And then moving forward into 2000, 2001, um, the company had changed their name from JSR Ultrasonics to Imaginant. And the first handheld gauge or the MicroPelt series gauge was launched, um, the UPelt 301 and 501. And again, this was a handheld gauge. So we were away from the cabinet and the long 18 meter cable, and we were able to move around easier in automotive paint shops to take measurements. And then in around 2015, we updated our technology to a TS series gauge and the TS standard for, stands for touch screen. So the touch screens were launched and um, we also had better transfer speed with technology and a little bit better resolution. And that is the gauge that we are offering today. And then moving on to August of 2023, uh, the Pelt Imaginant was acquired by Bic Gardner. And we are very excited for this, this acquisition because now we believe that you know our Pelt systems will continue to grow and evolve to meet and exceed our customers' needs. Um, Pelt is used around the world. We're in 30 countries over six continents, and it is used extensively around the world. And Pell gauges are used for film thickness measurements in almost all of the major automotive OEM and several plastic and composite suppliers. This is just a few of our automotive customers, but we, we have several more. This is just a little snapshot for you to see. And then we're also used in a lot of industrial applications, of course, automotive, which I just touched upon, but we're also in the wind turbine industry, aerospace industry, and shipping container industry. Some of the 
some of the non-automotive applications. We also use Pell is and large trucks and construction vehicles. Um, I just mentioned, showed you a picture of the shipping container industry. Um, there's a zinc rich prime layer on the shipping containers, and that's a very important uh, corrosion protector. So it's important for those films to be measured. We're also in the aerospace industry. So for example, the lightning protection and uh, radar deflection, there's a lot of different um, aspects military wise and aerospace for pelt measurement. And the wind blades is also an important industry for pelt because the different layers on the thickness of the composites on the wind blades will help for balance and uh, corrosion on the leading edge of the wind blades. We also can take measurements in the coil coating industry and also on some of the new high end bicycles and motorcycles that have some of the carbon fiber and high tech materials. Okay, what does PELT actually mean? It is an acronym and it stands for Pulse Echo Layer Thickness. And PELT gauges are used, are non-destructive and they measure the thickness using very high frequency ultrasound. PELT gauges are the highest revol resolving power ultra thickness gauges on the market. This is achieved via a combination of unique high frequency transducer technology and high frequency ultrasonics. Our technology was designed and manufactured in the USA and Pell technology has been used in the automotive industry since the early 1990s. Capabilities of Pell is so it's non-destructive and it can measure up to five layers individually and simultaneously. We measure all types of cured coatings like powder, the three wet technology, electrostatic to, to name a few. We measure all substrate materials, steel, aluminum, plastics, carbon fiber, other types of composites, and there's no need to change your transducer for different substrates. And we have our micropelt gauges, which I'm speaking of now, and we also can use our technology um, on robotic systems. So our multi-layer measurements are digital. The accuracy is stable and it does not drift. Unlike gauges that use magnetic induction, PELT gauges exclude zinc and galvanization thickness, allowing direct measurements on the actual coating layer thickness. So for example, if the PELT gauge was compared to an elect um, a magnetic induction gauge that's typically used for monitoring e-coat, if we were to compare the PELT data to the magnetic induction gauge, the pelt would read the e-coat layer thinner than the other gauge because the pelt gauge is reading the e-coat only and does not include the zinc galvanization thickness, whether it's present or not. The alchometer, I'm, well, the magnetic induction gauges will include any pre-treating treatment coatings. Uh, pelt measurements are not influenced or affected by differences in sub substrate or magnetic properties or thickness. And it's very easy to use. We have a user friendly interface and it allows for quick and easy measurements. Basically the pelt is an acoustic microscope. Um, we put glycerin inside of our cap right here that's on our transducer probe. We spray water directly on the surface that we are going to measure. And we use this as a couplet, similar to if a pregnant woman was getting an ultrasound, you, they put the jelly on their stomach before they take the measurement. That is so the sound can go through her skin and get into her body to see the, the little infant in there. Um, similar, we put water on the top of the surface of our measurement area so the sound can travel through and into the top coating. And then echoes are generated at the surface of each layer boundary and the return echoes are digitized and displayed on a screen. So when the sound goes through the first layer, it bounces off 
when it hits that layer boundary and comes back up and it continues to do this through every single layer until it hits a substrate layer. So our acoustical microscope, if we were to take this cross section that we have displayed here and put our output, uh, which is a, a typical sine wave um, or a scan waveform rather, you would see that the space between where our probe touches and the first layer boundary is represented in this cycle. So we have our, this is a typical automotive steel coating. So the distance between here and here between these echoes is our clear coat. The distance between this echo and this echo is our base coat, our prime, and our E coat. And at each of these painted layer boundaries, we get a signal that looks like what we call an M or a W. And sometimes people call them a negative or a positive. So these are the two basic shapes that we are looking for when we're placing our layer boundaries, as we can see here compared to the, uh, the microscope image. Pell cages are essentially, again, I said, an acoustical microscope. We see the same layer boundaries as an optical microscope would see. The differentiation or the contrast between the layers is a function of the differences in the mechanical or acoustic properties between the adjacent layers. So in other words, the sound, when we talk about acoustical contrast, means the sound travels through this clear coat layer at a certain rate, and it either speeds up or slows down when it goes through the next layer. And the analogy I use for this is if I'm speaking to you through our computer, you can hear my voice because we speak in a certain hertz that we hear as an, it's audible and our ears are tuned to it. If we were all to go into a pool and go underwater and I was to speak to you so you could see me visually, the, the, my voice will sound, sound garbled, and that's because the speed of sound is traveling differently through the water, and you're probably just reading my lips to understand what I'm saying. It's a little bit more difficult for your ears to hear the words I'm actually saying, if you can remember doing that, you know, as a kid or as an adult, even. It's kind of a fun thing to do, um, but that's the same thing that's happening with our with pelt. Sound is traveling through each layer, and it will speed up or slow down depending on the materials and the mechanical properties of each of our layers. And it's important to know that just because this clear coat is used, that speed of sound isn't necessarily going to be the same for every single coating or every single color in that particular automotive um, customer's palette because the base coat also will affect the speed of sound through that top coat. So it's every single layer is sound is dependent on the adjacent layers. If I was to change the prime across the board as this customer, it would change the sound velocity of the eco and it would change the sound velocity of the base coat. So our, moving on, our transducer technology advances can help us improve visualization and low contrast layers are difficult to resolve layer boundaries. So sometimes our layers are a little bit similar as far as um, acoustic properties and our echo isn't necessarily as tall or as prominent as we would like. But now with some of our newer transducer technologies, we are able to resolve some of those more difficult layer boundaries. And also the resolution of thinner coatings can be achieved utilizing higher frequency transducers and ultrasonics. Here is another example of a typical automotive four layer steel um, waveform in comparison to the microscope image. So we have from one to two here, we have our clear coat. From two to three, our base coat. Three to four, a prime layer. And four to five, our e-coat layer. And what we, how we determine the thickness is um, the, the basic 
formula here that layer thickness equals the velocity of sound times the time it takes to get from each echo boundary and we divide that by two and that's because it's a round trip so the velocity of time between this echo and this echo multiplied by the velocity that we have determined and we divide that by two and that gives us our layer thickness for each layer Here is an example of a three layer plastic waveform with microscope image right here. We have our clear coat, our base coat, and then our prime, and then the beginning of our plastic substrate. It's right there. The thickness data um, and in waveform analysis, it can be done right on the gauge. So we can take a measurement right on the pelt gauge and then we can move the marker placements and we can get information right away if there's something that's going out on in a manufacturing situation and you need to do a spot check or you need instant information. This is a great tool for that. We can measure it right on the gauge. But most of the time, most of our customers like to take, you know, do daily measurements, um, daily monitoring. So they take several measurements across a sample and then you save them on the gauge and then you upload them into our computer program which is called pelt manager and then we can place all the markers on one wave and then ask the computer to go ahead and place the markers for us so it doesn't take us a long time trying to analyze each individual waveform And the importance of adequate layer thickness, um, for example, in the automotive industry, clear coat and insufficient clear coat can inhibit, pro inhibit proper flow and leveling of the coating, which can negatively impact appearance. An excessive clear coat can lead to sagging and excessive material usage and cost. With base coat, insufficient base coat thickness can negatively impact color harmony and result in color mismatch. An excessive base coat thickness can also result in unnecessary high material usage and cost. Then with primer, insufficient primer thickness can result in a loss of UV protection, which then may result in disbanding of coating layers. And for many auto automotive OEMs, primer thickness is a critical measurement parameter. An excessive primer thickness can result in also in unnecessary high material usage and cost. And for e-coat, insufficient e-coat thickness can result in a loss of corrosion protection, and especially in certain regions of the world, such as body rocker panels that receive a lot of salt, and I can, I can say that's for sure in upstate New York. And excessive e-coat thickness can result in unnecessarily high material usage and cost as well. Now we have four available handheld pelt models. We have the BIC MicroPelt 3, which can measure up to three layers and can be used on any substrate. And it is our low energy model, which is an ideal for high frequency, high resolution measurements. So very useful in the plastic supplier or composite industry. And it's compatible with the four listed transducers. And then we also have the BIC MicroPelt 3H that also measures up to three layers. And this, the H stands for our high energy pulser. So it's ideal to work with much more thicker and soft or attenuative coatings. And it's ideal for textured or grit blasted substrates. And it can measure up to five millimeters. Now this gauge is primarily used in um, some military settings and also our uh, shipping container industry because those layers are tend to be a little bit thicker and on a shipping containers most of the substrates are blasted. And then our BIC MicroPelt 5, this is the most widely used uh, model of pelt gauge and it can measure up to five layers and it also again can be measured used on any substrate and it has the low energy or our standard energy and it's ideal for high frequency high resolution measurements so this is used 
exclusively in the, I shouldn't say exclusively, but the automotive industry typically exclusively uses the MicroPelt 5 and it's compatible with the listed transducers there on the slide. And then we have our BIC UPELT 5 Plus model, and this combines the capabilities of both the 3H and the regular 5 gauge. So it has both dual pulsers. It has the high pulser and the low energy pulser, and you can switch between the two, and it's compatible with all the transducers, and you would only have to switch the transducer if you were taking measurements for one application that needed the higher resolution and then you would potentially switch to the different transducer for a different application or if you were potentially wanted to measure the substrate thickness itself you would change to a different transducer to to get that thickness we also have a robotic pelt model and it can be mounted on a variety of robot types and additional mounting facets can be used for other measurement devices, such as the BIC WaveScan 3, the Robotic and BIC Mac, and the iRobotic. And it can be used on all substrate materials, and it's compatible with all of our BIC high-frequency transducers, as you can see listed here. So in summary of this presentation, I'd like to say that our um, PELC technology is the global leader for multi-layer coating thickness measurements. The robot measurements are the standing, our standard for leading global automotive manufacturers such as BMW, Stellantis, Audi, Ford, Motor Company, and many more. Uh, the multi-layer measurements can help reduce material waste and defects and ensure durability. Multi-layer measurements control is the prerequisite for appearance and color harmony. And for automated systems, keep it all under one roof, multi-layer thickness for the robot pelt with your multi-angle color control, your BIC Mac and your iRobotic, and appearance control with your BIC WaveScan robotic. And coming soon, all of these, all this data can be used with one program, Smart Chart. So hopefully pelt will be coming to Smart Chart very soon. Um, Everybody's going to ask when, perhaps, and we, we don't have an, a date for that just yet, uh, but it will be coming soon, and we are looking very much forward to that. So I know I kind of breezed through that very quickly through my presentation, and I appreciate anybody who has been paying attention and listening, and I open it up to any questions that you may have. A lot of good stuff, Renee. Thank you. Um, and, you know, since you touched on robotics, I just threw in the chat here a, a link uh, to a YouTube video. It's a video example of robotic pelt um, along with the Big Mac Eye and Wave Scan on an arm. So you can uh, take a look at that. And you. Let's, yeah, you bet. OK, we have some questions in here. Um, I think this was towards the beginning of the presentation. How do you know when to mark the different layers? That's a great question. So we provide, a, when you purchase a pelt gauge, we provide uh, color calibration standards and you send in samples, um, your own samples from your own production area. And we determine what those sound velocities are. And we generate we give you the guide wave, we give you the expected waveforms for that particular color. So for example, um, thank you, John, for pulling up this slide. So if sure. this, this, you know, green, let's, this is a green color, let's say. So for this, let's call it forest green, we give you this guide wave and we tell you this is how you're going to be marking this forest green until something changes and we issue you a new sort of our new guide wave so that you'll know where to place those m and w markers for the peak we never want you to have to guess we never expect you to guess we provide you the this guide wave for you to always be able to reference nice nice thank you um yep. another one in here um regarding repaints um, sure. Can pelt, pelt work on repaints? Um, do they need to be calibrated with a, a repaint layer? How does that work? 
That's a great, also a great question. Thank you. Um, yeah. So we can measure repaints. Now the pelt does have a limitation of up to five layers, but that doesn't mean that we don't see every single layer boundary. So if we open up the window, our display window, uh, wide enough, we could see up to 20 layers if, if need be. Um, but we can only have the technology right now and, and math wise, um, this, the software is limited to five layers. So you would certainly be able to place the marker at the beginning of the clear coat or the top coat and where the substrate is and get a pretty close target or I'm um, sorry, total to see if you're, you know, if it's a pass fail situation, but we can um, also calibrate for repaints or repairs based on what the what the customer, what your goal is. Do you only really care about the thickness of the last three layers? So in other words, the last clear base and prime, we could calibrate for that so you could get that information. Or if maybe the e-coat is very important and the prime and base isn't, we could combine the double base and prime we can make a combination of an addition anywhere in between there, but we will allow you to get thickness data for only five of those layers. Okay. Okay. Um, on, the, on the subject of calibration too, um, what panels are needed for calibration um, and does each color need to be calibrated independently or how, yes. how does that work? Perfect. Perfect question. So yeah. for a typical automotive customer with steel panels, they would send in, we recommend a horizontal and vertical panel just so we can see a range of, of, of film thickness, but uh -huh. if, if possible, but usually one panel will do and we'd like a full build. Uh, we used to ask for masked panels and we're starting to get away from that. So, cause it's a, it's a little bit labor intensive. So a full build that's in your process so have it go through your full process and you would send that to our pittsford site for now mm -hmm. and we would generate the calibration and we do recommend a each color in your in your off in your palette to be to be calibrated to get the best accuracy and this is true for our steel and our plastics customers now we understand that in our the plastics supplier industry they have several customers and this could, their palette could be up to hundreds of colors. And, and we understand that. And it wouldn't be cost effective to calibrate all 200 colors that they could be offering. So in that case, we would provide color family information. So we would take uh, maybe like the, all the red solids or the dark solids would be in one family. The white solids would be in another family. Uh, maybe the lighter metallics would all be in their own family and we would work with the customer on on how that would that would work right approximately how long you know how much time do we need in our pittsburgh facility to measure that out um and, and get that data back out to the customer i won't hold you to it and i'm sure it, yeah. i know it depends on workload and all kinds sure. of other schedules but just a rough guess Sure. Days, so, um, it's, it's, it's so the target for our calibration lab to turn around uh, color calibrations is two weeks. Um, okay. Sometimes during busy times, they're running closer to three weeks. But yeah. when you send in the samples for calibration, you will get an acknowledgement from the lab and they'll let you know that they have the product information sheets required for the samples, that the samples are adequate film thickness for calibration that we have a purchase order. And then they also, if everything is um, ready to go, then they give a planned completion date. And like I said, that's usually in the two week window. Sometimes at our highest busy point, it could be in the three weeks, but they let you know that. Gotcha. Okay, good, good. Um, let's see what else we got here. Can ceramic materials be measured? It depends on the surface of the ceramics. If it's a porous or an unglazed ceramic, uh, we would definitely want to look at samples and do a feasibility report because my concern is that that would be porous and the sound would hit like an air pocket or an air bubble and, uh -huh. and uh, we would lose the the sound would be dispersed and we wouldn't get a clean echo. If the um, ceramic area was glazed and had a smooth surface, we should be able to measure the 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 coating of that. 
But we, we can run trials and tests just to. Absolutely. Perfect. Absolutely. Perfect. Um, follow up to that question. Uh, can multi-layer fiberglass reinforced plastics be measured? Yes. Um, again, we would like to take a yeah. look at samples for that, um, but we have we have successfully measured that type of application. Awesome, awesome. Um, can you measure adhesion promoters? Um, good question. And it depends on the target thickness and the materials. Um, okay. I don't want to say across the board, we can measure all adhesion promoters because we do still have a little bit of trouble because some of the adhesion promoters um, target is down at, you know, two, two to three microns, which is a little bit okay. below the pellet's ability to resolve. But with some of our newer transducer technology, we are starting to push the envelope on that. And mm -hmm. we would recommend any customer that had adhesion promoter to send us a couple samples and we can make a recommendation based on their samples. Awesome, awesome. A um, couple questions kind of around the same thing. Uh, what are the minimum and maximum uh, mill thickness that this can measure? Sure. So um, with our typical our typical gauges, um, the the minimum we say that the minimum is about you know six to seven microns, but that's with our standard transducers. So again, it, it's really tough um, to to give an an absolute um, measurement one way or another um, mm -hmm. uh, for a low and a high because um, because of the different pulsers and the different transducers. Um, we don't want to limit ourselves on, in one way, you know, at the low end or the high end. Got it. So again, you know, get you samples to run some trials and, yes. and go from there. And and I don't mean to um, my poor poor Michelle in our care lab. I don't mean to put all the workload <laughs> on her, but um, she we are happy to do um, free feasibility studies for any of potential customer. You would just send the samples to our Pittsford office. And we look to make sure um, if the pelt is a good fit and we provide a technical report um, to, to say that one way or another. Excellent, excellent. Um, can uh, the pelt measure wet film thickness or is it only dry? So um, just to clarify, the pelt needs to take measurements on a cured surface. Okay. However, um, the wet on wet process that we see in the automotive industry is no problem for pelt. We can measure the wet and wet technology, but the surface must be fully cured for measurements. Oh, that's cool. I was going to guess try only. So you taught me something. Thank you. See, there you go. You're welcome. I, I know. I love doing this stuff. I always learn something on some strange technology here. Um, so it's awesome. Um, let's see what else. Uh, how often does the robotic pelt need to be calibrated and can it be done at the the facility or does it need to be dismantled and sent back to Pittsburgh? So, uh, um, yeah. yep. So the robotic pelt system, the, the, the cell system itself, um, has a calibration that's done on site. So the robot does ah. not have to be dismantled. Um, we have a technician that'll come on site and there's also, um, there's also test panels that are in that cell that also can be uh, recalibrated or readjusted, and that can that can be done, I believe, off well can be done offsite and brought to there or um, used to validate the system um, while you know online without somebody being on site. But I believe right now the robot cell certification as a whole, it, everything is done right on site. Okay. Very cool. Um, if, if someone was interested, you know, can you walk walk me through or walk us through the steps? You know, they contact you, you run a trial. Um, what what does that process look like? Sure. So, so for any potential customer who has not used pelt before and really needs to have a, a film thickness solution, they would reach out to us. We would talk about their application and we would ask some basic questions. Uh, what are your target film thickness? How many um, different you know, colors or film builds, unique film builds do you have? And are you able to send samples for evaluation? Then we would 
if they were able to send samples, we would do the feasibility report. Um, and that is in the Cal Lab. So that's off, also in that two to three week window right now. And then once the report was completed, we would discuss the report with, with the potential customer. And then we could come out and do an on-site demonstration. I mean, because Pelt Gauge is a capital purchase and we don't expect anybody to just blindly believe us based on a report. We want everybody to be able to see how the Pelt works and be comfortable with it. So yeah. we, we would come on site, uh, do a demonstration, let the customer, you know, use it for the day, you know, kind of, you know, play around with it, have the whole team see it and listen to a couple presentations. Um, and then hopefully, hopefully that is enough and yeah. they purchase the gauge and, and then are, are super happy getting film thickness data. Yeah. And then, you know, fully trained up and set up and yeah. Oh yes. Stuff, right. And then we would, we, right. And once the purchase is made, we come back out on site and do full training to make sure the operators are very comfortable with marking the waves. Um, Again, you know, we don't expect anybody to just take the gauge out of the box and be able to <laughs> place markers. You know, we give a very, very inclusive um, and thorough training to, to make yeah. the operators comfortable. And we're always available um, through email and phone to discuss any potential questions or they're not comfortable with the waves. You know, I just went out and measured this this green forest green job i took 30 points or 50 points or 200 points and i don't trust where i place the markers you can always email us the job yeah. file and i can go through and take a look and you know provide my feedback you did a great job or you know this we could optimize where you're setting this a little bit but yeah we're always available for support excellent i'll, I'll put down on my list to to take a trip out to see you in uh, pittsburgh and we can you know, film some how-to videos and film sure. some clips of this process because I think it'd be, you know, hugely valuable for for our audience here. So I'll uh, I'll put that on my list. So stay tuned. All right. <laughs> um, another question here from Ron: uh, When measuring coated plastics such as ABS, what would maximum thickness uh, possible uh, to include ABS thickness? Um, well, if you wanted to um, measure the ABS thickness, so uh, right off the top of my head, I'm going to be honest, I don't know, you know, with our standard transducer, um, what what that thickness would be. So we would, um, we would ask, you know, if we already have a sample, because if you're already a current customer, you could let us know and we could take a look. Or if not, if you're a potential customer, um, would to send us a sample, because it might be a situation where um, you would need a high energy or I'm sorry, the low energy pulser and okay. um, a lower frequency transducer. It might be something that you would need an additional transducer. So if you wanted to take the measurements, the film thickness measurements, you would need your standard setup. But if you didn't need to measure the ABS thickness, you might have to um, change to a different energy mode and a different transducer. But we would certainly work with whatever you needed to, to get you that information. No, oh, that sounds good. That sounds good. Um, we are, let's see, I think we got through all of our questions here. Um, if anybody else has anything, um, feel free to drop it in the chat box. We have some time left. Um, also, if you think of a question after the fact, any of the automated messages you receive um, from us here from the marketing department, you can simply hit reply. It'll come to you know our team and we'll funnel it to Renee or, or the technical specialist. Um, also, you know, our, uh, because now uh, Pelt is part of uh, the Big Instruments family, any of the regional sales managers that you're used to dealing with on the, on the big side of things, they can help you out as well. Um, set up demos, work with Renee and the team. Um, they've all been trained at the end of last year, so they're very uh, well versed in this as well. Um, so don't be afraid to reach out to your uh, inside sales manager or, or your regional sales manager. Um, are there, you know, we, we can fill, fill a little time here, uh, Renee, uh, while we're sure. waiting for some more questions coming in. Are there, you know, tips and tricks that you, you've seen or, or things you see reoccurring um, when yeah. you know, people are measuring? Um, can you talk about some of those? Sure. That's, that's a great, great question. Um, 
So a lot of times we see what's called the, you know, we call it the double clear or double front end echo phenomenon. And that's where our, when we place the cap down, sometimes we trap a little bit of water or even a tiny speck of dust that's just making the transducer not quite hit parallel to the top of our coating. And we get an extra gigantic waveform towards the beginning of our front echo. And when our customers see that, and I'm sorry, I don't have an example to show here, but you know, we tell our, our, our customers, you know, if you see a couple of those, you know, really try to slow down and take your time when you're taking measurements. I know our operators, usually our pelt operators, it's not the only thing they have to do in the day. They've got 16 other or more job yeah. responsibilities when they're going through and, you know, the pelt like, is just like the rest more. of us. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Pelt's just one more tool and measurement that they have to take during the day. And they get so used to it that they're just zipping through as fast yeah. as they can. And, and that's fine. And for the most part, pelt is a very quick and fast measurement tool. However, if you're starting to see issues in your waveforms, now you're potentially, you know, you're potentially adding some error to some thicknesses that we don't want to see. So my recommendation is, you know, if the front end echo looks kind of goofy and you look like you're getting a bigger, you know, like a double echo is to just, mm. you know, wipe off the face, you know, wipe down the surface and just really try to, to dial in and get the right amount of pressure. Um, so you're not causing any water trapping underneath the transducer cap. And then I also get a lot of questions. How often should we change the cap? Oh, mm -hmm. How much should we change the glycerin in the cap? And my recommendation is, is it's different for everybody. It's a user feel kind of thing. The reason we use glycerin inside the cap is so it doesn't dry out. Because if we use just straight water, it would dry every day. So we put glycerin in there because it lasts longer. But, you know, maybe once a week or once every two weeks, take a lint-free cloth, clean out the inside of the cap, um, add a new one fresh drop of glycerin, just one, you don't need that much, right on the face of the transducer and gently put the transducer back in the cap and you should be good to go. I mean, if the cap looks really scratched on the bottom or if it looks like the edge is starting to lift up a little bit and becoming delammed, de it's time to change the cap and throw that one out. Um, but, you know, but recommend pretty much, you know, once a week or once every two weeks to, to clean out the cap and put in a fresh drop of glycerin. Perfect. Perfect. Um, what else? Are there, yeah, I don't need, I'm just trying to uh, under, I'm, understand I'm also, this and get up to speed on it myself here. So I don't even know what other questions to ask. Um, are there, you know, well, I guess one question I do have, um, what just what's the most challenging or kind of craziest thing you've measured with pelt? Well, <laughs> I mean, so, sure. That's, that's, that's a great question. Also, um, a long time ago when, when the lab was slow one day, they started walking around and trying to figure out what the craziest things they could measure with, with is, and, uh, they measured, um, one of those Jordan almonds that you used to get a long time ago at weddings. We could oh. clearly see the coating on the Jordan almond almond. And then we decided to up the ante and they got one of the gobstopper candies and was able to see all the, the layers of a gobstopper. So that was just us, you know, being bored and, and yeah, and, and trying to be funny. But um, yeah, if there's a layer boundary, um, you know, Pelt can <laughs> most likely get through it and we can, yeah. and we can see it. So it's, it's a, it's a pretty powerful tool. And, it, and it's just, it just needs that smooth surface, right? As opposed to porous or textured. Exactly. So we, we have had some uh, plastic suppliers, you know, that with bumpers that did texture bumpers, that, but they were painted texture bumpers and okay. you know, we were able to see it. And then, you know, the next model year or two model years later, later, they changed them from not being painted to just, the, you know, regular textured. And then, of course, you know, we weren't able to to, to make measurements, yeah. you know, or the, the grain had changed you know, it got a little bit more porous. Mm -hmm. So the pelt wasn't able to rest flat on the surface and it was going into the caverns or the, you know, the ditches yeah. there and, 
and the sound was dispersing. So we do need a relatively flat, smooth surface to take measurements on. Great, great. And, and just to reinforce what Renee mentioned earlier, if you have any questions, you know, get get with, you know, inside sales, regional sales manager, um, Renee, um, if you don't know where they are, or who they are, you know, just hit reply to any of the marketing messages and we'll, we'll get get it to the right person. Um, but it's just to, to run a trial, see what kind of data we get and see if it makes sense to you know implement something and to, to streamline your process um you know improve efficiencies all that good stuff yeah all and right. um, for any of just one more thing for any of our yeah. existing customers if you're in attendance um if you need spare parts right now if you need spare parts or any or calibration services or gauge certifications that's all still coming through um the pittsford site and you can you know, ask me directly for those and I'll get you quotations. But if it's for the um, the sale of a pell gauge, um, if you do know who your local, um, you know, your local rep is, as um, John was saying, you need to contact them because they are, um, again, very, they're, they're trained and, and ready to help and, and ready to go. And, you know, I've been working with them and, and, and we are ready for, for all your pelt needs. Yeah, exactly. And I'm, Let's see, and I, I can uh, get that information out and publish it, um, you know, list of our inside sales and uh, regional sales reps also. So stay tuned. I'll get that to everyone on the on the call. Um, with that, I think unless, unless other another uh, question or two come in, I think we can wrap it up here, um, save a little bit of time in your day. Um, I'd like to thank you, Renee, uh, for sharing your expertise. Um, really looking forward to learning more about this technology and the uses. Um, thank you to everyone for attending. Um, like I said, you'll receive a uh, recording link of this. Uh, feel free to share it with colleagues. Um, check it out next week or, or later this week, uh, whatever you like. And as always, just feel free to hit reply and uh, Reach out if you have any questions at all. We'd love to help uh, help your process and um, streamline uh, what you're doing. So with Absolutely. that, have yeah, have a great day, and uh, we appreciate you uh, joining us, and look forward to seeing you on future uh, Big Instruments web seminars. Thank you. Thank you.